Welcome back, this is Yamajack, and today we got Gunslinger Lavender Town Suicidal. And, uh, how am I doing today? Like, a billion times better. Yesterday? Not so much a fun day for me. Today? Much, much more fun. Yesterday? I don't know, I just... I was so tired. I didn't actually end up falling asleep. Um... After I finished recording. Um... I feel super slow right now. I, I was just playing TF2 as a as scout. So right now I'm feeling highly, highly slow. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm so accustomed to being significantly faster than this right now. But uh, sensitivity over there was the same and, and the controls were largely the same. So it shouldn't be too hard to, to kind of get back into the KF2 um, sort of uh, mindset. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I had, uh, just been really tired, and I didn't fall asleep. I just ended up getting into bed. Actually, I actually didn't go to bed until really, really late last night, uh, believe it or not. Um, I, uh, well, I went to bed really early, I just didn't fall asleep. Um, so after I finished recording the last episode, a friend of mine had some troubles with Python. Uh, so I helped him out for like it took like five minutes to, to kind of walk him through the uh, the problem he was having, and then I uh, I abandoned everything and went right to bed. Uh, I, I looked around for a bit of a video to watch as I as I fell asleep, um, and there was a, uh, a already on the screen on my. Raspberry Pi like search thing. I was watching a the previous night. I'd been watching a Gwimpage uh, Summer Games done quick path of or a Radiant Dawn speed run um, So after that like on the same thing was uh, a Mecha Gwimpage Kirby Master or Kirby Master and Cyan Yo uh, Path of Radiance um, draft race. So they, they pick characters they're going to use and uh, then they go ahead and play through the game using only the characters that they picked and uh, they race and whoever gets the first pick gets to get the, the one character that they use in normal speedruns and <laughs> wins, of course, right? Um, but, uh, you know, it was, a, it was an enjoyable thing. I haven't actually watched it all the way through. I'm about four hours in now. It's like a seven hour long video. Um, it's, it's, it's taken me uh, like a few hours on and off uh, watching it. So I watched about an hour of it um, after I had uh, gotten into bed after recording. And I had... Um, Not actually ended up falling asleep, and I, I just kind of felt refreshed after that. You know, it's, it's oftentimes what I have is, is I'll be super, super tired. But uh, what I what I'll, what I'll need isn't sleep. I'll need to like rest for a while. You know what I mean? Like I'll just have to like almost be sleeping, but not quite sleeping. You know what I mean? Like does that make sense? Like I don't necessarily have to actually fall asleep. I just have to like get into bed and lay there for a few hours. And, um, I don't have to, like, fall asleep. I just have to kind of, like, shut my brain off, I guess. And, uh, just kind of not worry about anything and not do anything and just, just relax and, and rest for a while. Uh, and last night, that, that's definitely what I needed, so I did that for a few hours and, um, I think I ended up taking a nap later on, but not, not immediately after finishing recording. Um, yeah, I was just, I was unbelievably tired. It was incredible. I, I, I had not been that tired in... Like years, it was it was incredible. Like just, yeah, a, a very strange experience to say the least. Um, but uh, you know, it's over, over and done with. I am still a little tired today, uh, but that's that's expected. You know, that's nothing out of the unusual. Cause I had D and D this morning, uh, so I had to get up at 9 a.m. and I ended up getting to sleep at like 4:30 or something like that. Um, so I didn't get much sleep last night. Not as much as I would have liked. I did have a bit of a nap yesterday, just not immediately after the the recording. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay. I, I'm, I'm quite tired today, but it's nothing on the same level of, you know, this is just like, yeah, no, I'm having a, I'm having a day where I'm a little tired. And, uh, you know, you just kind of deal with it. Yesterday was a day where I was like, mm, no, <laughs> you know, um, so. Yeah, we played D&D &D today. Unfortunately, we had to cut it short. We only had a two and a half hour session or so. Because um, one of the members, one of the party members had to go get their haircut. They had a haircut uh, appointment and they thought it was a little bit later than it was. So we had to... Uh, to go and uh, like stop early. They wanted to start playing earlier. Like this morning, they were messaging the the Discord, like, "Hey, we should start like an hour early or something." And uh, I didn't actually wake up until nine o'clock in the morning. And then you know it's nine o'clock. I have to like wake up and you know do all my morning duties and maybe find something to eat, kind of get ready, prepare, go over what I'm gonna do for the session. And, uh, you know all this kind of stuff, right? So I'm like nah <laughs> we I'm awake an hour before but there's just no way that I'm gonna be able to wake up and play D&D immediately like it's just there's a lot of prep work that goes into it, right? Uh, but regardless it was a fun session. I think short so we didn't get much done um, But it was a fun session so they um, Just to recap you they committed a crime over in Waterdeep uh, they've been Dragged into Watercrest, which is a uh, a magical realm that uh, kind of captures the uh, the fugitives running from uh, Waterdeep, uh, such as the the plot anyway. Um, that's what they say, you know. Um, and uh, each of the characters has like a little sort of thing to go over and. They're going to be kind of judged based on how they handle the situations they get into and, you know, what what uh, kind of happens throughout the, the individual missions. Um, so we've already had one of the characters' missions kind of go through and uh, they finished that. And they've, they've been moving over to the other characters' uh, mission for a little while, for like a couple of sessions, because like midway between the two... Uh, somebody wanted to make a new character, so we had to kind of like take a detour and uh, go and like introduce this new character and stuff. Uh, today they finally got to the new character's area, and uh, they went to a uh, so it was a village that they ended up at, um, like a uh, a village in a, in a sort of like a valley area amidst um, like a bunch of uh, like a, uh, a fairly densely populated forest uh, and it's a little bit of a, a clearing that they've kind of settled down in about a, an, a kilometer or two in um, diameter kind of thing and uh, so they got there uh, started asking around seeing if they could find a place to stay for the night uh, they found the Crooked Talon, which was a, uh, a tavern that, that one of the locals recommended. They went there, bought a room for a night, and uh, the stairs went underground rather than upstairs. So they went downstairs, and there was just a ton of rooms laid out very in a linear, straight hallway with uh, these very opulent rooms kind of branching off to the, to the sides every, uh, you know dozen or so meters um, and uh, in this room that they got in the rooms they got uh, underground there were these windows that uh, were showing the outside you know with all the the trees and the forest and the ocean and you know the fresh air and sunlight and you know, all, all this kind of stuff peering through the window uh, that was uh, underground. So one of them tried climbing out through the window. Um, one of them tried to... Well, yeah, hold on. One of them tried to climb out through the window when they got outside. There was nothing out there, including a window to get back in. Um, so they came up with a really cool solution where uh, one of the other people put their hand outside and uh, the person who was outside grabbed their hand 
and then uh, the person inside casts Dimension Door to like teleport them both inside. And I'm like, you know what? I was I was gonna have you go about this a different way, but that is a creative way to handle the situation. I'll allow it. So uh, they managed to get the person back inside through that method. Unfortunately, though, uh, because they kind of cheesed it a little bit, and I was like, you know, I'll, I'll allow it. Um, they ended up like thinking that it wasn't relevant to the story. These these windows underground. So they go around town, and they're they're like, you know, talking like, I have no idea what we're supposed to be doing right now. And I'm like, I'm just I'm just like thinking like, how do I? get them to realize that it has to do with those windows so you know the bartender was like hey you should stay away from those windows uh don't play with them so much you know and i, I started feeding them information from like the the townsfolk like oh, i don't know when but any underground uh complex under the the crooked talon and uh oops stop 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 we're not this was the video i just set live um and uh, they're still just like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm a little lost. I'm like, come on. Come on. <laughs> Please, just do it. Just go investigate the window. Talk to somebody about it. Just do it, okay? Don't just ignore it. Um, so they finally ended up going to the town hall and, like, investigating it. And uh, there's, like, the some disappearing tourists who happen to go missing um, oftentimes when they're spending time there. Uh, the mayor is utterly unconvinced that there is an underground section to the uh, Crooked Talon. Uh, they take him there. When they get there, the other uh, stairs that led downstairs now led upstairs. Uh, they looked around for their room upstairs, and the rooms that they had previously stayed in were not there. They were different rooms upstairs. Um, so they again tried to dimension door downstairs and see if they could get down. They took the mayor. Uh, so we had uh, one of the characters in the mayor in the underground tunnel when it was blocked off. Um, and, uh, you know, at this point, the mayor is, like, you know, in duress over the, the fact that uh, this huge underground complex is just going completely underneath their uh, their noses, you know? Uh, so they take him to the room and show them the window, and the mayor's just like, what the heck is this, dude? This is what you, what did, you know, what is this, you know? He's like really awestruck by it. And, uh, so then, you know, it, it's time to start introducing the, now that they've recognized the window as being a point of contention, so to speak, um, a point of, of interest, uh, it's, it's time to start adding in the conflict, right? So we've, we've, we've piqued their interest. Now we add in conflict, um, you know, something to be concerned about. You know, you have something to be interested in. Now you have to be worried, right? Um, you know, and, and then with, with that interest and that worry, you, you're gonna want to like, no, like, what's going on? Is this safe? Is it, do like, do we need to like, you know, help? Do we need to? Is there a problem going on here? You know, like that kind of stuff. Like that, those kinds of emotions are what you want here. Um, so interest followed by conflict and, uh, and concern fear perhaps even um, so I introduced a uh, a monstrous like janitor thing almost uh, that was going through the rooms and uh, like taking a peek through them as they were down there the, you know as, as you do when your underground complex of who knows what is uh, currently locked off um, and then unfortunately it was like right at that moment that one of the players was like, oh, actually, shoot, I have to like go to a hair appointment earlier than I thought, so we're going to have to end it. I'm like, we just got to the like exciting part, you know? We would have got there a little bit earlier if they had uh, investigated the window a little bit more intimately, immediately, you know? But can't blame them, you know? It's uh, it's my fault for not giving them enough. I'll have to. It's it's it's, it's always a balancing act when you're when you're making a thing like this, right? Like you don't want to hand everything to your players. You don't want to completely railroad everything. You want them to have some kind of free choice, and you want that free choice to actually exist, right? You don't, you know, 
DMs will often joke about how, uh, you know, the, 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 you come up to a forked road on the left is, uh, you know, the town of, you know, Zenfield, and on the right is the town of Orfield or whatever. Um, they're like, hmm, which one are we going to go to? And, and, you know, as the DM, you're like, they're both the same town. <laughs> um, doesn't matter what you pick. And it's just, you know, the illusion of choice. But at the end of the day, um, for, for a lot of decisions, it's important for that choice to actually matter. And, and for the players to see that it matters, you know? Because if they don't see that their choices matter, and that they're having an effect on the world, uh, and that they actually, like, these things are happening, and they're not, the, like, like, to me, it's important to make sure players know that they're not the center of attention, right? They're just normal adventurers doing normal adventurer things. And uh, as they get to be more and more powerful, they'll uh, they'll start to do more and more adventurous things. But ultimately, you know, other people at a similar level are, are also existing and doing similar things. Um... So, you know, you, you want to add in that, that free choice and, and let them discover things on their own and let them explore and, and uh, you know, see the world and, and make those decisions and conclusions themselves. But then you also, you know, you, you also as a DM have the responsibility to kind of keep the, the ball rolling, you know, keep things interesting, exciting, uh, keep there being, you know, something happening that, that the players are going to have fun with. Um, and the, these two things don't really intermingle so much, right? You can't have it be complete free choice. You know, there's nothing happening in this world that possibly involves you. Um, and then also, you know, you're going to have fun and you are going to be the center of attention and you are going to be an important hero, right? Like, th these are very conflicting ideas, but, um... It's always a balancing act, you know? Sometimes you end up making things a little bit too hard to figure out because, uh, you know, you want it to, to really focus on the fact that they're not, you know, some magical thing that happens to notice a bunch of stuff that other people don't notice. Um, and uh, we're going to have a lot of money this round. Um, and then you also want to kind of, you know, Keep in mind that they are also kind of magical things that are going to notice things that other people aren't going to notice. It's just it's, it's a hard balancing act to get it uh, to the point where they feel free, like they could do what they want, but uh, they also feel important and necessary in the story. Because you you can't really do both. If they're necessary in the story, then they don't have a choice. You know. If, if they're an important part of the the history of the town or whatever, then they're, they're kind of involved in that. And that's a commitment that they have to make, even if they don't necessarily want to do it themselves. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of a responsibility that gets thrust on them. Sometimes when, when, you, when you play through adventures and it's like, you know, somebody just randomly runs into a tavern and is like, I need help. Who is the most uh, adventurous looking people here? And they just like pinpoint them in the bar. It's like, you know, they might have picked somebody else. Um, and uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to make that balance for sure. So today, I think I, I definitely went on the uh, too free side of things. I gave them too much freedom. Didn't restrict them enough. Didn't kind of railroad them enough to to keep it interesting and fun and engaging for them. Other days, I, I feel like I go the other way, you know, I, I keep it a little bit too railroaded and, and they ultimately don't feel like they have a, a choice in what happens. They don't get to affect the story or make any changes to uh, to what's happening. You know, like they're, they're, they have no impact. And uh, as a DM, it's, it's definitely a point of anxiety for me, thinking about this. Uh, my players always say that they have fun. Well, not well, not always, but generally speaking, they they say they have fun, and uh, I believe them. I have fun too. You know, it's it's a, it's a fun time. We're all enjoying ourselves, and they definitely want to play because uh, they definitely want to play. Um, but uh, you know, it's still you still get anxiety when you're when you're thinking about it, when you're contemplating whether or not you've done the right thing. And, 
Whether you've, uh, you know, railroaded them too hard or, you know, done this or done that. It's concerning, Ooh, for sure. Rewarding, though. There's, uh, there's very little more enjoyable in D&D, &D, to me, than when your players get genuinely, like, attached to something that happens in the game. You know? Like, when, you, when, when, when your players are, like, crying because somebody died, or when they're, like, really mad at, um, at something that's happened to their character or to a, you know, one of their friends in the game or something. Um, you know, when they, when they get emotional over the, the world that you've put together and, and created, you know, with, with their help, when they, when they get really emotional about it and they get really invested in it, it's just, uh, it's, it's a really, really great feeling. There's, there's little better than it. Um, in, uh, in D&D &D anyway. Man, that got, like, exploded, dude. I'm feeling generous. There's, there's little better, you know, and, um... For me, it's what it's all about. It's what it's all about. But today was a good time today, so I had fun, and I feel a lot better. I'm still tired, but you know, uh, I'll, I'm, I'm managing. It's uh, it's a manageable tired. Yeah, we got a lot of dosh, almost twelve thousand. Holy cow! Anyway, that's gonna do it for today. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.